Hi. Welcome to this fourth look at the Christmas 2023 weather prospects. And at the time of filming, it's two weeks until the big day. So how are things shaping up? Well, just before I jump into the analogs and the computer model data, a very, very quick reminder of the definition of a white Christmas. I've discussed this in previous weeks. That may not be a white Christmas, whilst that may be. Onwards with the analogs, and I'm going to present the top five for the last seven days. So it's looking at the state of the pressure patterns across the Northern Hemisphere through the last seven days, comparing them with the same period in each year, going back to 1948. Starting with number five, and it is 1994. Fairly run-of-the-mill, an Atlantic flow covering the UK, not a white Christmas for most of us, perhaps to see higher mountains in Scotland. Forwards to number four, and it is 2004. This was actually quite a chilly one, low pressure there, just to the northeast, colder air sweeping southwards, and I think some parts of the UK, especially in its northern half, would have seen snow on December the 25th. So, a little bit more promising there. Onwards to number three, and it is 1999. Quite a famous one, this, because at first glance, there's a flat westerly flow moving across the UK. Very, very typical. But there were some heavy showers around and a little bit of colder air aloft coming in on that very brisk westerly flow. It led to a technical white Christmas in London. Most people didn't notice it, enjoying their turkey and sitting down to the uh, to, to watch for TV in the afternoon, but it actually snowed, or at least there were a few flakes mixed into some of the heavier showers there, so it counted. But not what most people would call White Christmas, I expect. Onwards, and in the second position this week, it is 1965. This one has been doing rounds for quite a while now. Chilly, with cold air moving down from the north and I suspect some places would have seen wintry showers on the big day. So, what is in position number one this week? Here we go. It is 2020, so very recent high pressure air building in from the Atlantic. But there is some cold air still in place over the southern half of the United Kingdom. And I believe one or two places actually saw snow showers on Christmas Day. But for the vast majority of us, it was a green Christmas. Well, quite mixed there, the analogues, but how are the computer models shaping up? And now because the lead time is only 14 days, that may be a long time in actual weather terms, but several of the medium range computer models do go out that far ahead now. So it's not just the 35 day GEFS and 45 day ECM plots, which I'll be, which I have been looking at in previous updates. Instead, we've got the 16 day GEFS, which updates every six hours. This is for London, 850 HPA temperatures across the top. So values at about 1500 meters above sea level, precipitation there along the bottom. And the section of the graph here is from the 21st of December and it goes out to the 27th, so it's covering the Christmas period. Quite a big spread there in terms of what the different runs are showing at that 850 HPA level. On the whole though, it's a rather average pitch of the mean, the ensemble mean, the thick purple line staying close to the thick black line. So if there isn't a signal here for it to be cold, it's not out of a question at this stage by any means, but it all looks fairly typical. With a number of uh, spikes there across the bottom on the precipitation part of the chart, it also is indicating that unsettled conditions are likely to be returning just before the Christmas period starts, perhaps because before then, through the middle part of December, high pressure looks like dominating. Some very high temperatures up aloft, but quiet and calm conditions probably for southern Britain. Not many rain spikes there, if you could just see behind the shaded out area. But as we approach Christmas, unfortunately, I think it looks as though things will be turning more unsettled once again. There is a potential as well for it to become very windy. I think that is something to look out for. The two meter temperature data table for London through Christmas uh, Eve, Christmas Day and Boxing Day 
is favouring relatively close to average temperatures. The light green there making up the bulk in each of the three daily columns and light green indicates runs which are forecasting between 6 and 10 Celsius as a maximum. Just worth highlighting though, there is quite a bit of dark green there as well as yellow. The yellows are very mild, 11 to 15 Celsius. The dark green indicates cold maximums are between 1 and 5 Celsius. So it's not a done deal by any means at this stage, even in the south. Up to Glasgow to see the 16-day plot. It's, if, there is more of a negative anomaly here. The ensemble mean is below the 30-year average through the Christmas period. Lots of spikes there across the bottom as well, indicating a wet picture, quite an unsettled picture. But if we see the snow row at the very bottom, I didn't discuss it on the London chart because it was so, the, the values were so low. But here in the Glasgow area, they are reaching between 7 and 11. The maximum they can be is 33. So between perhaps a 20 and 30% chance of snow falling in this part of the UK. The 2 metre temperature data table for Glasgow also reflects that colder scenario. Dark green here in the majority on each of the days there, between 1 and 5 Celsius. Also a little bit of blue, the very cold runs, a small minority but not totally discounted. Also some of the milder light green there between 6 and 10. So definitely a signal for it to be colder as you head northwards across the UK. Very typical, of course, it tends to be the case most of the time in the winter months. Final chart here is the European Ensemble postage stamp plot for Christmas Day. It shows the forecast pressure patterns from all of the individual runs. If you want to pause the video and look at them in more detail, then go ahead and be my guest. But I think the takeout here is the majority have low pressure centered to the west, the northwest of the UK. The climatological norm, not favorable for widespread snow. So, to summarize, at this stage the forecast remains speculative, but the analogs are mixed and computer models are favoring close to average temperatures with a greater chance of being cold in the north. Also, that increased risk of strong winds is something to bear in mind, I think. At this stage, there continues to be no signal for widespread snow, but as I've hinted, Scotland is best placed. So, I have to finish by issuing a white Christmas score. On my last update, it was 2 out of 5, 5 being the greatest chance of widespread snow. What am I going for this time? Let's see. I'm keeping it at 2 out of 5, so no change. The analogs still offer some hope, the computer model data, an element of uncertainty with that potential for it to be cold in the north at least. So 2 out of 5 widespread snow looks very unlikely to me at this stage, but some places could see a white Christmas, particularly in the northern half of the UK and even more so over higher ground in the north. That's quite a good catch-all to finish on, I think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will try to issue at least one more before Christmas, and if you're really lucky, I'll dig out my flashing Santa hat, even if I can't promise snow. So thank you very much for watching now. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you all very soon. Thanks now. Bye.